In 2012, the IDW volume of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was still developing its core concepts. But with the new origin anchored in reincarnation dating back to feudal Japan, some key story elements needed to be defined. Why was the Shredder still alive after so many centuries? And most importantly, how the Foot Clan came to be? Today, I will talk about the Secret of the Foot Clan miniseries from the IDW comics. The secret history of the Foot Clan wouldn't have been possible without Matteo Santaluco, who was a published comic artist way before his involvement with the Ninja Turtles. One day, the TMNT editor, Bobby Curno invited him to work on the main book right at the very beginning of the run. However, Mateus was interested in doing the writing as well. Since that was already being covered by Tom Waltz, Kevin Eastman, and Dan Duncan, Bobby promised him another book to write and draw. Mateus did end up working with Dan Duncan for the flashback sequences in issue 5. But before that book was finished, Bobby asked Mateus to write a proposal for Secret History of the Foot Clan. Mateus worked on plot and art for the miniseries, but he wasn't alone. Eric Burnham was brought in to work on the scripts. According to Mateus, it was a true collaboration, with Eric working for Mateus' suggestions and adding new scenes and dialogues. Mateus also worked with his studio mate in Porto Alegre, Joel Vieira, who did the colors following the palette recommended by Mateus. As for the script's pacing, Mateus cited manga and Akira in particular as an inspiration for how fast he wanted the action to be perceived by the readers. Other inspirations cited by Mateus were Lone Wolf and Cub and Vagabond. In terms of demands made by Nickelodeon, only one change was requested, and it had to do with the height of Mateus' turtles. He wanted them to be even shorter than the humans, and with more contrasting heights, but the idea was rejected. To round up the creative team, they were joined by Sean Lee in letters. For some context, the events of this miniseries took place not long into the ongoing series. It was already established that the Turtles and Splinter were reincarnated, and that Oroku Saki had killed them in their previous life. The same Oroku Saki that was still alive and kicking. The saga of the Foot Clan unfolds in the Muromachi period with the formidable Takeshi Tatsuo, whose name aptly translates to Dragon Warrior. A master swordsman, Takeshi served the Yu clan, but his soaring ambition and prowess invoked fear, especially in his lord, the daimyo of the Yu clan, Ashikaga Yu. In feudal Japan, a daimyo wielded control over their domain, but Ashikaga's ambition extended further. He aimed to become the shogun, the military ruler overseeing all of Japan. But Ashikaga feared Takeshi. His reputation grew so fast that he started eclipsing Ashikaga's strength. In a desperate move, he dispatched an army to eliminate Takeshi. In the ensuing epic battle, Takeshi miraculously emerged as the sole survivor, albeit gravely wounded and missing his right foot, abandoned in the snow to meet his end. Tatsuo should have died there, but he was rescued by the witch Kitsune, who healed him back to full health, even reforming his lost leg. Kitsune made Tatsuo a powerful and almost immortal man, following the errands of the Tetsuoni, the Iron Demon. Kitsune said that the demon promised her the secret of life in exchange for conquering some lands. With his newfound power, he ended Ashikaga and wiped the clan Yu out of existence. Inspired by the mark of his bloody foot, he formed the Foot Clan, and under that banner, they committed all kinds of atrocities in the name of the Iron Demon, including burning villages to the ground and slaughtering women and children. Many clan members, like Oroku Maji and Masato, disagreed with the path the clan had taken, and were becoming fed up with its brutal tactics. Furthermore, Masato's grandfather served under Takeshi's command, and it didn't look like Takeshi had aged one day older since then. This fueled suspicions in his followers of demonic alliances, further bolstered by sightings of a three-tailed fox, Kitsune's animal form, who was acting as a liaison between Takeshi and the Oni. Maji and Masato confirmed their theories after seeing Kitsuna transform from a fox into a woman. 
Orokumaji led a rebellion to kill Takeshi after learning that once a month during the full moon, Takeshi isolated himself in his quarters before Kitsune left with an empty satchel, returning two days later with it full. Maji, learning of the elixir that preserved Takeshi's youth, orchestrated an attack during one of these periods of weakness and successfully vanquished Takeshi, aiming to restore the clan's honor. But Kitsune warned Maji that by killing Takeshi, he only brought disgrace into his house. She said that Takeshi would be avenged, and his own house would be the death of him. Despite her threats, Maji and Masato endeavored to steer the Foot Clan towards redemption. Afterward, Kitsune approached the Shrine of the Iron Demon, who was none other than Krang, and asked for his help to restore the power they needed. Years passed, and Maji's son, Oroku Saki, began to manifest traits eerily reminiscent of Takeshi Tatsuo, suggesting a possible reincarnation. Maji, hoping to alter this course, endeavored to instill the essence of love in Saki, aiming to break the cycle of dark karma that had ensnared Ashikaga and Takeshi Tatsuo. Sometime later, during a celebratory feast honoring a successful clan contract, Saki and Hamato Yoshi, a student of Masato, were acclaimed as heroes. Amidst the festivities, an incident sparked when Saki made an unwelcome advance towards Yoshi's wife, Tang Shen, leading to her rejection and a subsequent altercation between Yoshi and Saki, which Master Masato had to intervene to stop. After that, their masters announced that their latest mission was a trial for them to ascend to the rank of Chonin. But sadly, Saki was too ambitious, and sharing the rank with Yoshi didn't sit well with him. All his life, Saki felt like he was destined for greatness, but his father always disagreed. Yoshi offered another point of view that perhaps his anger was delaying his destiny. From the reader's perspective, it was clear that Maji was trying to prevent Saki from becoming a tyrant. Unfortunately, Kitsune found her way back to Oroku Saki and showed him a glimpse of his past life by leading him to the hidden location of the Ashi no Himitsu, so that Saki could learn about his true legacy as the founder of the Foot Clan. Upon noticing the missing book and having heard of Saki leaving town, Maji dispatched men to retrieve him, echoing Ashikaga's past actions against Takeshi albeit with instructions to avoid fatal measures in hopes of reasoning with Saki. In this confrontation, one of the swordsmen left a permanent mark around his left eye, but none of them were enough to stop him. Saki learned the truth about his past, and also was offered a vision of the future, a future in a city made of light that was his to rule. In a ruthless turn of events, Saki murdered Masato and later Maji, disguising the latter's death as an assassination while concealing Masato's fate. With their passing, Saki sought the title of Jonin of the clan. Yoshi, preoccupied with his young family, endorsed Saki rather than challenging him, a decision that led to his and his family's eventual demise, a tale for another time. One day, Kitsune found a more permanent solution to grant Saki immortality. In one of her usual meetings with Krang, Saki and Kitsune attacked him and took the ooze. Krang was sent through the portal and the shrine was destroyed. Afterward, Kitsune prepared the final ritual. Saki drank a more potent version of the elixir, and while the potion began to work, he committed Harakiri. Saki died, but would break free from the cycle of reincarnation. Instead, the magic of the ooze would bind his spirit to his form for all time allowing him to return whole. Saki was then enshrined in a casket filled with the purest ooze, sealed away for his rebirth. Many generations later, Karai executed a blood ritual, completing Saki's transformation into the Dragon Warrior. Awakened, Saki gazed upon New York City, a modern metropolis that mirrored the promised city made of light foreseen in Kitsune's prophecy. But that's only the flashback side of the story, which is wrapped within a framing story in the present. In this plot, the Turtles, April, and Casey listen to Dr. Patrick Miller discussing his discoveries about the Foot Clan. Dr. Miller had stumbled upon some lost pages of the Ashino Himitsu, which translated into English means the secrets of the foot. 
The pages of this book, found in a hidden Takeshi Tatsuo's temple, had details of the clan's secret history. Authored by Takeshi, the book contained narratives long absent from historical records, revealing the Foot Clan's influence on politics, their medicinal knowledge, and even their foray into dark magic. Dr. Miller deduced that Tatsuo had formed the Foot Clan from the remnants of the Yu Clan after killing Daimyo Ashikaga. The secret of the Foot was their alliance with the Witch Kitsune and her master, the terrible and powerful Tetsuoni, the Iron Demon. Intrigued and seeking deeper insights, particularly regarding Shredder's resurrection, the Turtles in April hoped to learn more from Miller. However, their interest was mirrored by Karai, who approached Miller with additional pages for his study. After telling their master Splinter, he confirmed the rumors about the Witch Kitsune, as these stories were told to him by his master Masato. The Foot's alliance with the Witch led to decades of darkness that the clan had to endure a darkness that only stopped when Maji killed Takeshi. On the other hand, Shredder wanted Dr. Miller to work for the clan so he could do more research for him. Shredder was looking for a powerful resource the Foot Clan lost. The plot thickened as Leonardo, Raphael, April, and Casey, attempting to meet with Dr. Miller, witnessed him being whisked away in Karai's limousine. While they followed them, Karai and company found them out, and after a quick chase, they lost them taking Dr. Miller hostage. However, Raph was able to put a tracker on Dr. Miller's suitcase. Shredder explained to the doctor that the Foot Clan was still active, and then gave him the opportunity to study the Ashi no Himitsu. But this momentary alliance was short-lived, as the Turtles, Splinter, April, and Casey staged a daring raid, retrieving both the book and Dr. Miller, even as Karai dispatched Alapex to pursue them. A quick maneuver by Raphael thwarted Alapex, buying them time to interrogate Dr. Miller, asking him about anything in that book that could mention the resurrection of the Shredder. He found a passage saying that the Dragon Warrior was eternal. His thirst for vengeance could never be slaked, and no death could hold him. Furthermore, it was said that the Dragon Warrior could be reborn whole. There's much more behind this text that would be explored later in Shredder in Hell. They took the professor to their allies' bar, the Scarabray, where everyone was surprised that Mikey could read Japanese. Splinter resolved to destroy the book to keep its secrets from Shredder. However, their location was compromised, leading to a clash with the clan. Not wanting the secret to immortality to be lost, the professor wanted to take the book back to the clan. April took the book from him, but the doctor returned to the Shredder. The turtles managed to escape thanks to April's calling the police who interrupted the brawl. After studying the book, the Turtles learned how Shredder came back to life, even though the book had many missing pages. Splinter then decided to burn the book if it meant that it would slow down his accumulation of power. Shredder was very disappointed after losing the manuscript, as he wanted the professor to find clues in it about the final resting place of Kitsune. She hid herself to sleep away the centuries, and it was long past time she was found. He then pressured the professor to discover where Kitsune was, a story that would continue in the City Fall Saga and later evolve into the Pantheon Saga. This story made Michelangelo the only turtle who remembered the Japanese language. Initially, Mateus wanted Donatello to be the one to have this unique skill, but Eric argued that it made more sense for Mikey, as he was the social turtle and therefore, it would fit with his other skills of connection with others. Mateus was working with the established mythology of the book, but he also enriched this world with a very complex story that would later become the backbone of the IDW universe's mythology. He continued working in the ongoing series, but the secret history of the Foot Clan wouldn't have a spiritual sequel until 2019's Shredder in Hell, which I've already covered in this channel. I recommend watching that video to get the full story of how the Shredder was resurrected. What are your thoughts on the secret history of the Foot Clan? And how does this Shredder rank for you compared to the other Shredders? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, see you in the sewers.